All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about survival, small survival kit knife ideas or options. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on primarily folding knives and talking about smaller blades and working them into smaller survival kits. Now, of course, in the end, you know, it's always the best idea to have a large, capable fixed blade, but in some regards and sometimes you may not be able to incorporate that into a survival kit. And so these are some solid options that will fit into most spaces, most kits that will give you at least a sharp, reliable cutting edge. So without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the Instagram, all the support means a ton. Okay, let's talk about them. So we'll talk about multi-tools after we talk about primary blades. Now, some people do like multi-tools over blades, but I think a, having a solid bladed option is definitely a pro. And starting it off, we're gonna talk about the Benchmade 550 Griptilian. Now you guys can see that this one does not have a pocket clip and that's probably how you would run it in a survival kit, especially something like my Janus pocket extension. This would fit pretty easily in. And the biggest reason why I'm such a proponent to folding blades as opposed to small fixed blades is the size and so when you put this in its collapsed state or its folded state you can see that it's very uh, reasonably small and there's no sharp edges on it there's nothing and it's even pretty reasonably thin so this makes a really good package to throw in a pocket throw in a pouch throw in a kit and still have a reasonably competent blade that you can use and of course now once this is opened you have a good full-sized grip that you can get your hand on and a pretty large blade of course far from optimal far from a fixed blade but still very capable and once again you can do a lot with this now the other reason why i like the 550 is that at least original generation 550s like this from benchmade are very durable and can take some use or some reasonable degree of abuse and you can baton with this blade i've showed it off in other videos and it will take that abuse just fine now of course it won't be as strong as a fixed blade but if you do need to do in an emergency situation some batoning a blade like this will be able to take it other things i do like about the 550 is that because it has a hole in it you can uh, baton with this blade without running into any thumb studs that's another thing that is a fairly common trend with folding blades uh, is to have nice thick protruding thumb studs that will get in the way of the material you're trying to baton through so having a, an opening hole like that just reduces that drag Okay, next up on the list is the smaller brother to the 550, and this is the 556. Though the 555 is the technical small brother, the Mini Griptilian is another extremely capable knife that you can also baton with. And while it is not quite as big and quite as usable as the full-sized Griptilian, this is a blade that you can literally put in an Altoids tin kit and so if you are really going small you're really counting your ounces or your inches this is one that is very hard to beat and so overall i've also like i said batoned with this blade used it in a number of hard circumstances or hard use scenarios and it holds up perfectly fine once again i wouldn't necessarily recommend batoning this blade but it can take abuse it can take hard use and it gives you a solid edge that you can use reliably and repeatably in addition it is a pretty good sized grip it is definitely not full but it is definitely larger than anything in its size as far as things like fixed blades go so overall the 556 or the 555 family of benchmade mini grips are the next up on the list and they are very hard to beat Okay, next one up on the list is going to be the Spyderco Para 3. Now the Paramilitary 2 could also be on this list as it is a little bit closer in size to the Griptilian, the full-size Griptilian, but the Para 2, Para 3, and even the uh, Paramilitaries are good blades as well. So overall, like the Paramilitary 1 and the Paramilitary, I believe, 3 nowadays. Uh, so they, they, these guys are pretty good, and especially the compression lock blades they are once again not quite as strong as a fixed blade but especially keeping in mind the fragile tip because these are full flat grind blades with unsupported tips so you do have to be cautious as far as that goes but as far as 
uh, strikes to the back or to the spine of these blades. Compression lock blades are very tough, very resilient, and uh, very will hold up to a good amount of abuse. Once again, wouldn't recommend batoning these blades, but they can take batoning. I've never really batoned the Para 3 that I have, but I did have a paramilitary 2 that I batoned the heck out of, and it always held up well. So do want to keep in mind, like I said, that it does have a reasonably fragile tip, but this is another smaller blade that is tough, resilient, and going to be able to fit in a wide variety of different circumstances. In addition, similar to the 550, it does have an opening hole hole so you're not going to be running into any thumb studs that will be hanging up if you do need to baton something in an emergency. Okay so those are the three primary blades like I said I did mention a few others like the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 that would also fit into that list pretty well but now let's talk about a few uh, multi-tools that would make pretty good options. The first one is going to be the Victorinox Ranger. Now the Ranger is probably the least best of these two options because it is thicker and it is just overall a bigger tool. It is a reasonably small size but it is quite thick so you definitely could not put this in an Altoids tin. However you do have a main blade, you do get a pen blade, a file, a saw, um, a saw, a file, a chisel, you get a lot of useful tools in this and I think it's a reasonably good option especially for its size. You know it's around the same size as the mini grip as far as length goes. Of course it is noticeably thicker so that would be an issue but if you can, if thickness is less of an issue and you're looking purely for size, the Ranger is really hard to go wrong with offering you a good degree of versatility. Now, one that is definitely a personal favorite of mine for a number of reasons, and usually my go-to uh, bushcrafting Victorinox, is the Farmer. Now, the Farmer is the same size or same length as the Ranger, but the big difference between the Ranger and the Farmer is its width. This is a very thin knife or multi-tool, as some would say, coming in at even thinner than the little mini grip and it's not too thin. I think it's still comfortable enough to hold and it still is reasonably long so you can get a good four finger purchase on this blade. Now it does only really come as far as uh, useful survival tools with the you know main blade, the saw, the saw, and of course an awl, but still very useful tools nonetheless. And if you're looking for something that can go in something along the lines of like an Altoids tin for a survival kit blade, it's going to be hard to beat a as far as multi-tools go because you are getting more tools than just a reliable blade. You're also getting things like a saw and an awl. So anyways, guys, those are some small survival knife, small survival kit knife ideas. Hopefully this gives you guys some help if you're looking for different blades that you want to run in a smaller survival kit. Once again, you always want to strive for solid, robust, thick fixed blades. But if you can't do that, these are some solid options.